quickly he brings up two or three important points. Mm. Um, Fred's saying, look, on earth it's very, very common to believe that you're going to meet up with your family when you go, when you're in heaven. It is. And Mahaneen says, well, that's not even logically possible. No. Because once the couple marry, who's their family then? And if they have children, who's their, and if those, and children, those children marry, marry. Who, who ends up being the family you're reunited with? Exactly. Which is very valid. Are you valid reunited thing. with a whole hundred of thousands <laughs> of them from, from 10 generations past? Or whatever, who yeah. are you reunited exactly. with? Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, great, great, great Aunt Dorothy. Yeah. I, do, you, do you know? <laughs> who you never met. Who you never met. Are you that interested yeah. in meeting her? Yeah. And he, he basically says that there's another thing that brings people together and that's actually common affection, common interest, a common desire. Yes. And um, that that's better. Yes. And actually... You that actually works on earth too, by the way. Yeah. It's just prob often not allowed to work on earth because of the family mm -hmm. in many cases. Mm -hmm. It's like many times if you went and in, in, engaged a life with somebody else, you know, who your family disapproves of, you go, often get ridiculed and rubbished and even excommunicated by your family when you do that, right? And this is something that normally happens on earth. Um, and yet it doesn't have to happen. If the family on earth was more allowing of all these relationships developing, oftentimes by the time a child's 20, they might not see their children very frequently because their children are off, a parent I'm yeah. talking about now yeah. on earth, may not see their children very frequently because the child's off doing this thing with this friends and doing that thing with that and, and really connecting to their soul and engaging all the things they love. And, and that's different to the things that the parents love. Yeah, mm. yeah. And that's, but of course that doesn't happen on earth, why? Mostly because of the indoctrination that we receive from our family, isn't it? Yeah, to tell us that we have a duty and we're bound, and we're bound to, to these them. people. Yes. Yeah. And, and also there's this implication on earth that if you uh, do not spend much time with your family, then you don't have much love in you. Mm -hmm. And that's not true at all. In the spirit world, there's plenty of people with huge amounts of love in them. In fact, they're at one with God, so they've got large amounts of love. And they've never spent any time with their family for the last 2,000 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so the reality is spending time with your family isn't the, a judge of, of love. It's in, it, all it is is a, an indication that, if, that you're all, either drawn to them, mm -hmm. if it's a pure decision, mm -hmm. or you feel forced to be with them. <laughs> it's one of those two things. Yeah, yeah. And, and if we feel truly drawn to them, we won't feel a feeling of obligation towards our family. Yeah. If we felt truly drawn to them, we'd just want to spend some time with them without feeling obliged to spend some time with them. Yeah. Just like we do with anybody else. Because from God's perspective, we are all family anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, as you, like Mahanin says it very eloquently in yeah. very beautiful terms. And he also says that under that system, if you really, you feel happy for other people in your family because you know they're off doing things that make them happy rather Correct. than yeah. feeling bound. And I feel that's another problem on earth. Oftentimes the family isn't happy <laughs> that somebody from the family has gone off doing the things they like or want because there's a, often a feeling in many parents of, I don't want you to go and have to do what you want. Nobody's allowed to on earth do what they want. I wasn't allowed to do what I want, so I'm not going to let you do what you want either <laughs> type of feeling coming, a feeling of rage coming mm -hmm. from the parent towards the child. And so that's many times they are the direct impediment to the child doing what they want. Yeah. Um, with, that's not the case in the spirit world. Nobody impedes a person's pure desire to do the things that they love to do. Yeah, mm. yeah. Which is welcome news, I think, for many, <laughs> many probably, <laughs> on earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then Mahani builds on this theme and he says, every individual soul born into our life has become, by its life on earth, self-conditioned. And God has provided for it, having respect to two facts only. Mm. And these two things is what I was uh, think there's some worthy discussion involved mm -hmm. in these two things. First, the law which ever works to secure holiness. Mm -hmm. And the next, the means to attain that condition under the most favourable circumstances to the individual. Yes. So really he's saying there's, it's, there's law. And it... You and I know it's not one law, it's 
it's a group a of group laws. Of laws yeah. law, the law like, of love, you could call it. The law of love. Mm -hmm. And like we say here, there's, it's a, like a collective now, the law. Yeah. It's the law of the land. Yeah. This law, that's this law of love that governs this, the spirit world. Yeah, it's the law of the land in yeah. the spirit world. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> um, which is designed to bring everyone towards holiness, which is really... Yeah, or to state it more probably purely, it's designed to bring everyone into a higher condition of love, which is what oh, the de desire to yeah. be more holy really is. Yes. To come into a higher condition of love. So the law for everyone is designed to bring them into a higher condition of love. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, number one. Yes, and that means that you want to... You want that to happen under the most favourable circumstances possible. Correct. And so this law governs where you go when you pass because yeah. it's not, oh, I want to go and visit my family. It's there's a law governing because that law dictates who I'm with is going to mean the mo that I'm under the most favourable circumstances to grow towards love. Yes. To grow towards becoming more loving. Yes. Of course, that's I I assuming that I accept the allocation of my space in the <laughs> spirit world and many don't and that's why they're earthbound for a period of time beforehand yes mm. yeah because sometimes when we have strayed far from love on earth mm -hmm. the, condi the 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 conditions most favorable for our growth in the spirit world are, are the, hells. the hells that reflect to us the the consequences and implications of our unloving actions Correct. And so a lot of people don't want to face that and no. they go, oh, I'm going back to earth. Exactly. Um, but, but even the hills are the most favourable yes. location for a person in that condition. It's like if you put the person in the hills into the second sphere or third sphere, they'd create havoc. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the reason why God created this kind of system. So these people are placed exactly in the position they're attracted and drawn exactly to the position that's going to have the most positive benefit to help them learn about love. Yeah. And whether they accept that or not is yeah. really up to them, up to their free will. So they can choose to accept that and then work with that, or they can choose to fight against that, rebel against that, and their condition may even worsen them. Mm -hmm. that, you know, until they get to a stage where the pain is so great, they stop and they go, oh, now I better learn about love. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, we're all going to have to go, now I better learn about love at yeah. some point. Yeah. And, and so for some, so that point is like, unfortunately, terrible. You know, they have to get to such a, a sad, terrible condition before they desire to do that. And for others, uh, it, they want to do that while on earth. And so they start growing in love while on earth. And, and, and in fact, all the laws reflecting around the earth are all designed to help you do that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike most, what most people think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They're all designed the same way. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the most beautiful things that I see in God's design is that there's always laws acting upon us to bring mm. us towards love. Like mm. how loving is a parent who's designed absolutely everything in your environment to draw you closer to love mm. and to love of yourself, love of others, love of even God mm. herself. Yeah. And the reality also is if it's not easy for us to love, then it's because we're using a lot of resistance to love. Yeah. Because the reality is all of God's laws support us being loving. Mm -hmm. So if we're finding it hard to be loving, then it's because we're in a lot of resistance to love. It's not, not for any other reason. It's not like God made this terrible universe and it's really hard to love in it. <laughs> it's completely the opposite of that. God made this wonderful universe. It's really quite easy to love in it once you're willing to do so. Yeah. That's the key thing. And so this is like the first part of this sentence that you read. He's really showing that, ah, okay, this is the law that governs the land. And it doesn't just govern the land of the spirit world. It governs the land here too. But unfortunately, most people on earth ignore that law mm -hmm. in, 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 and substitute for it the law of this land, yes. which is often very selfish and, and also often very destructive. Mm -hmm. Or they substitute, and most people do this, they substitute their own law, yeah. <laughs> which is, I want to do whatever I want anytime, <laughs> thank you very much, and, and, uh, and I'll work out any excuse for doing it. And unfortunately, because of that, they have no idea that this law is still governing their still soul, still affecting their condition. And as a result, it's going to rapidly determine once they arrive in the spirit world where they should, where they should exist. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then I suppose there's that second aspect, isn't it? That he mentions there. Mm -hmm. 
the, me the means to obtain that condition under the most favourable circumstances. And so that, that's the second aspect of it. So there's this law based on your soul, but then there's also the provision of the means. And every single person, if, if, if every single person on earth knew that no matter what they chose to do on earth, once they pass, even if they pass into the hills, surrounding them will be the means for them to learn how to become more loving. Yeah. And they knew that there will be people available to them if they call on them, if they really want to become more loving. So the, every, every time they exercise a pure desire to change, there, there is all the things given to them that they need to change. Mm -hmm. All of the things given to them. And if they knew that, then they'd probably be less afraid of dying. They'd be less afraid of the spirit world. And also they'd be more reflective about their life on earth here, I feel. Because they'd, they'd, they'd want to choose to do things more in harmony with love here. So they prepare themselves for their arrival in the spirit world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what he's talking about in this one paragraph has a huge impact upon I know. people if they allowed themselves to, to, con to contemplate the information. Yes. <coughs> and mm. th the next two pages, really, I feel there is so much that if you really consider what is being said and apply it to life right now, mm -hmm. it would affect a lot of the way you, yeah, mm. the way you live and act and even the faith that you have in God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so he's really saying in the next paragraph that I can only see the possibility well, in the future. I don't know. I know that families don't hang out together. He's saying. Yeah. I know from that from his own experience. From my own experience, <laughs> yeah. I know there's this other thing that draws people together. Yeah. Um, but and in the future, I don't know. Except, I can see the possibility of forming groups of twin souls, in one great family of heaven, mm. until many st other stages have been passed. Mm. And of course. Really, he's talking about soulmates there. Correct. Yeah. He's talking about the soulmate relationship. Yeah. And the fact that there it exists. Yeah. And that uh, and that eventually, it won't be just one half of the soul that meets into a group and uh, is attracted to a certain group, while the other half is completely neglected. Yeah. It'll be that the two halves are drawn together, and then those two collectively will draw other two halves together. Yes. yes. In groups. In groups. Yes. Yes. And um, and. There are relationships. Their relationships are rightly termed. That's a typo there, I think. No, their, as in the place. Mm -hmm. Their relationships are rightly termed blood relationships. But flesh and blood cannot enter this life and therefore kinship has to be lifted unto, into another more spiritual bond of, the, of God the Father we are born into the Spirit and thus become brethren and sisters of one great family of heaven. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, really, the real blood relationships are the soulmate relationships. Correct. And, and that's, that's makes where you sense. begin with your family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's really cool. And we know that to be true. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit blase about that one. <laughs> it's one of I'm the, I feel it's one of the most essential truths as well about the universe. You see, I feel a, a lot of people on earth and particularly a lot of people again who come along to our seminars are ignoring totally this relationship, this soulmate relationship. They're not wishing to resolve the question as to who their soulmate is because they're afraid of resolving such questions. They're not wishing to progress towards meeting their soulmate or being with their soulmate in a soul connection. And the, and, and the reason why they're not is because they're not engaging their true nature and desire. And, and if they had of, they would be finding themselves automatically through the law being drawn to the other half of themselves. Yeah. So it's, to me, it almost feels like on the planet, because there's so much injury around the issue of family, there is um, a lot of us are not living connected to our true nature and desires and personality because instead we've taken on from our families the type of people we feel that we should be mm -hmm. the type of life we feel that we should live. more probably the type of people they feel we should be that's what i mean we've <laughs> taken that it's their yeah, impressions it's of their who impression. we should be that 
dictate the most of our life. Mm. What we do for a job, how we live, how we spend our money, how we spend our time. Yeah. For most people on and the, the earth right now... the desires we engage more importantly. Because it's a lot about the desires, isn't it? Meeting the other half of yourself is about you engaging your pure desires and living in harmony with your pure desires. And you can't meet the other half of yourself if you, if you don't engage that in some way. Yes, yes. Mm. I suppose I see all those things as an expression of your desire. Yeah. How you spend your time, your job, all of those things. That's True. all based on what you do, isn't it? Yeah. On what you want to do. And yeah. uh, but often the times, that, unfortunately, like you pointed out, it is what our parents want us to do, not what we want to do. So yeah. it's not really what we want, it's what they want yes. for us. And, and, and as a result, we finish, up, we finish up being way, way away from the other half of ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose that's what I wanted to say is that it seems like we live as products of a family unit rather than uh, or of a set of family injuries about the type of person we should be. We take that on mm. and then we don't, unless we challenge that, we don't end up operating under the laws that, like these laws that operate in the spirit world have the potential to operate upon us here on earth, well, don't they? Well, they do operate here. But like we I, fight them, don't we? We fight them. That's yeah. what we do. We're fighting against them. We're yeah. actually, and that's what makes our life more difficult, of course, because we're fighting against them. It's not, it, like, it, like I said earlier, if we were naturally doing what the law stated, things would be a lot smoother in our lives, actually, because all of the laws are there to make our lives more smooth if we love. Mm -hmm. and, and part of this soulmate relationship is about love. There's a lot you learn in that relationship about love that you cannot learn in any other relationship. And so when you're avoiding that relationship, what you're really doing is you're, you're shutting down a large portion of these law, laws. You're working against them. Mm. And while you're working against them, you're going to experience the pain of working against them, of course, which means that most of your relationships will be difficult and, and hard to, to engage. And when you meet your soulmate because you're avoiding all of the laws, you, you know, you, even that relationship is going to be difficult to engage until you start engaging the law. Yep. and start seeing that all of God's laws are perfectly in harmony with love, all aimed towards helping you grow in holiness, as the quote is here, or grow further in love. Yeah. 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 It's just a beautiful system, I feel. And so do I. I feel that, like we often, like when we speak to people about soulmates, there's some people who you speak to about it who you can feel they have an opening towards the other half of themselves. And so, and so they are attracted to conversation about who is the other half of myself? What, what, you know, what are they doing right now? What, what emotions and desires do I need to connect to in order to meet them? And they're very interested in those conversations. But then there's quite a large majority of people actually who have no desire at all to meet the other half of themselves and are working actively in the opposite direction to these laws and, for, and then they come up with all sorts of justifications, like, you know, what's going to happen to my current relationship? What if my current relationship isn't a soulmate relationship? You know, and all, all these questions get asked one after the other, implying that God is somehow unloving in creating this particular mm. aspect of our growth. And yet the reality is all we're doing is fighting the most loving person in the universe cre who created this loving law, which will assist us to grow. And it makes no sense to, to me, but, but I see m a lot of people doing this all the time. You know, this is why there are many single people who come along to our seminars, because they're already fighting that law. Mm. They're already fighting this concept as well. And, and so they come up with excuses for their concept as well. They're earth-based excuses for the concept, such as, you know, what's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to my children? Well, won't you love them still? Won't you love whoever you're with right now still? If you if you have if you the person who you're with right now is not your soulmate and you meet your soulmate, won't you have a loving way of dealing with that information? If you really had a desire to love, you would. Mm -hmm. right? mm. So there should be no trauma in, in the sort out of all of that stuff if everyone involved really wanted to love. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And this is what I see as a main problem about these questions. Like, I remember when I first met you, the, the whole soulmate issue was pretty much off the table, wasn't it? And, and I feel that's the case for many people. Like, they, they live in this place where they, they want to have the right to select the other half and while you're allowed to have the right to select the other half because that's free will at the end of the day 
if the other half that you've selected is not your real other half, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a bit pointless in the long run. <laughs> well, the truth is you can't select your other half. It's already done. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's finished. It's done and dusted. By the time you, <laughs> you've got a body, that's it. It's, it's over. Well, even before then, it's over. But, <laughs> but I think, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. It's, yeah. it's, it's not anything that's within your control. And you and can if spit you at God and you know, condemn God for creating such a system, but at the end of the day, God is the most loving being in the universe. God would have created this system for loving reasons. And, and, and most people who are not honouring that are not trusting God, in fact. Yeah. They don't trust that God will help them through to sort out any issue that might arise as a result of that issue. I also think that a lot of us hate ourselves because of our, yeah. our true selves, I mean. True. Our, yeah. our, so the worst thing is to meet the other half. <laughs> <laughs> They're just another person that we hate. <laughs> yeah, if I can explain that a little sure, bit more sure. for the viewer. Yeah. You know, when we grow up in a family that we have our unique personality that God created within us. But yeah. if our family unit doesn't um, encourage or even like those parts of us, then we can internalise that and s start to hate the, the, our very true nature. And so then mm. meeting the other half of us isn't attractive because they are just reflecting to us what we don't like about what ourselves. we don't like about ourselves or to be again more more accurate Precise, yeah. what our parents don't like about us <laughs> yes that we've taken on you yeah know. and unfortunately and we meet the other half of ourselves and there's now two people that the parents won't like yes <laughs> basically yes and and we are often so addicted to getting approval from our family that that we will deny the characteristics and traits that we have within ourselves that are also within the other half of ourselves just for the sake of maintaining this relationship with our parents which is actually not who are not our parents at all because god is mm -hmm. and who are basically harming us yeah. in this in this projection or in these desires that they have to, for us to not be who we really are yeah so so you know there's a whole set of problems there as a result if you look at all of the different emotional injuries that afra had here yeah. asking these questions they are all imbibed in the actual relationship between parents and children which also then means that by the time uh, the second half of the child comes along the parents are already got their clear ideas of what they like about that other half and what they don't yeah <laughs> yep and 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 if that other half has been developed in the different directions uh because they had freedom to develop in different directions than you then of course you're also going to be quite challenged because now you've got to go against your parents yeah in order to enter this relationship yeah and for most people that's almost you know that's almost the thing you've got to avoid at all costs absolutely and it's only after they pass in the spirit world that they start entertaining the concept yeah that they're allowed to engage a relationship with the other half of themselves no matter what their parents think <laughs> but even then it ta it's not a magical thing that happens once no. a person passes they still have to deal with those emotional um, injuries systems, yeah. and false beliefs that they took on during mm. their childhood yeah. um, this is why parenting is such an important job isn't it well uh, yeah I, I think we shouldn't call it a job myself I think we should just call it in, 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 in uh, a, an institution that's been created by people on earth in order to manipulate and control little little new souls that God has placed on the earth and and in the end the true parent is God so we shouldn't even call it parenting because God's already doing the parenting <laughs> well, all we need to do is the brother and sistering <laughs> <laughs> you know in other words we need to see each other as brothers and sisters yes but we all we, but I do feel that God created parent uh, like this the process of having a child and being if it was done in a pure way you would be more progressed in love you in terms of understanding god as a parent uh, and understanding yourself but you as wouldn't a soul. see yourself as a parent at all no but you you would if you were a good brother or sister want to impart the wisdom that you had wouldn't correct you? which yes. a good brother or sister would want to do yes you'd yes. want to you'd want to be able to impart the things you have learned about your parent yeah and about the universe that your parent created and all the things you haven't learned you'd be honest about and all the things you disagreed with you'd be honest about <laughs> instead of trying to force them down the throats of of the little brother or sister that you've yeah. now brought into the world yeah and so this is where i feel you know, one of the main problems with parenting is that we've got to get away from the idea that we can parent. <laughs> yeah. Because we're not parents. Yeah. Literally, we're not parents. No. 
Uh, and even when, we've, uh, even when we give birth to a child, we are not parents. God is the parent. We are the surrogate. We are the surrogate and we're only a brother or sister to this child. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the right to do anything with this child that God wouldn't do. Yes. <laughs> so this is something we also need to consider. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel that, again, that's one of the major injuries on earth. There is this feeling amongst parents that they have the right, that there's ownership, that they have the right to do whatever you like. And you, quite often you hear, and you've even had it said to yourself, you're my daughter. I basically, you've got to do what I say. You've got to listen to me. No, you don't. No, I'm sorry, you don't. You've got to listen to God sooner <laughs> or later. But even then, God doesn't say you've got to. God says, you, you can listen to me or not. You're going to experience the pain of not listening to me if you don't. So mm -hmm. it's a free will choice. God doesn't ever say you've got to. So, so the fact that a parent is saying they've got to is already out of harmony with love. Yeah. So, you know, I feel this paragraph, this chapter is so good in terms of highlighting many of these errors, the Absolutely. errors with regard to soulmates, the errors with regard to family, the errors with regard to who your friends really are, and all of these errors, like, they're yeah. all just highlighted in one chapter. And I doubt whether many people who have read the chapter have given it that much consideration. No, <laughs> and I, I wish I myself was a little bit better prepared for this chapter because there is so much in it, like I said, mm -hmm. and I haven't had much time this week. But uh, if we keep going, um, Frederick now exposes himself in another <laughs> way, showing another one of his injuries. Yes, he yes. says... <gasps> Would you tell this to people on Earth, what you've just told me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a terrible mess it will create on Earth if people know the truth. Yep. <laughs> and my name says, well, of course yes, I would. I would. <laughs> <laughs> because it w isn't it the thing that would actually bring people together? Yes. It would, and, and I agree with him yes. wholeheartedly. Yes. Um, you know, that that not only that, family is a, a earth made construct yes. and that the real family is every, we're all brothers and sisters but also that all of god's laws are acting to bring us towards love yeah. and at all yeah. times and we have the means to do that yes yeah and yeah. and he's really alluding a lot of way through the chapter of course uh, to my words in the first century where i said that you know my brother or sister or mother or father are those who listen to the to to god and do what God's laws dictate basically yeah and you know do the will of God is how it's quoted in the Bible but the the reality is that they do become your true mother father brother or sister it's not your family but rather the people who become your family through attraction yeah and and it's those those who are attracted to growing in love and if you're attracted to growing in love they'll become your family but those who are attracted to evil still and if you're attracted to evil, they'll become your family. Yes. And it doesn't matter what you say, you know, you want to go and see your family. Well, no, they are your family. They are the ones who have the same way of thinking you do, the same way of doing things that you do. They are the ones who have the same unloving condition or loving condition that you have. And so they become your family. Yeah. That's the true family. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And he says here in the following paragraph, that pure affection, whether between members of the same family or not, is an attribute of the spirit and not of the flesh mm -hmm. um, and can only be secured or dissolved by spiritual approachment or estrangement. Yes. And that is pretty profound in terms of the fact that most of us think that even outwardly displays of affection and family going to family gatherings and doing the right thing and getting <laughs> mum the mother's day gift and all yeah, of these all things that, that equates to affection and my is saying it's not no it's a spiritual thing yeah. and it is affection really he's saying it's based in like if we term spirituality as growth in love yes it's about something that originates in your heart. Mm. And whether you have it for your family member or for someone else, that's the thing that binds people together here. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, that, and that surely is something that everyone could see logically because it, it, it makes no... It, like, if you think about the average person on Earth, they go along to a family do, you know, like as we call them here in Australia. Well, I don't know what they call them overseas. A fa family function or a family yeah. gathering. And... and most of the people going along don't really want to be there. <laughs> it 
you know what I mean? And there's usually fights and arguments and all of the unhealed stuff that's happened all the way through the life of that family gets usually brought up mm -hmm. <laughs> during the period or ignored completely. Yeah. So everyone's just says, detuned and have a beer or, or something like that. And nobody's really connecting with each other love. They might have brought gifts even, but there's no real love connection in that place. So what's the point in having them? There's no point in having them unless there is a love connection. Mm -hmm. And you don't have them just because mummy wants one or dad wants one or brother and sister need one or something. You do it because you, love draws you to do it. And so in the spirit world, of course, that's exactly what happens. There, you know, So there's far less parties with family <laughs> in the spirit world than there is parties with family here on earth as a result because the parties in the spirit world all happen amongst the people who are all drawn to the same location for the same at the same time for a similar purpose yeah and it's got nothing to do whether your family are there or not yeah mm. yeah yeah and you know uh, the other thing that he keeps saying is that that's a good thing it's a great thing <laughs> it's a yeah. great it's a great thing <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so i suppose then the Frederick's displaying kind of throughout the rest of this chapter. He's concerned that if you tell people that there's not eternal damnation or it's not all as soon as you pass, that there's still possibilities for you to grow in love and mm. to be closer to God and stuff. Um, he's worried about that. Like, yeah. what, what's that going to mean? I was wondering before we go to that, though, where, where, where we just talk about this the whole concept of... Oh, the last repentant soul? Well, no, no. no the concept of um, the fact that, like, he, w this child who, who has now, pa who, who is in the process of passing, yep. um, he can see his parents if he wants to see his parents. Yes. But it is highly unlikely he will even want to see his parents. Yep when there is no love bond that would draw him to his parents. Mm -hmm. So even though he, he can see them if he wants to, it is highly unlikely that he even wants to. Yeah. Because it, cause the love, the only thing that would draw him to seeing the parents is the love that would be in the parents for him. And it's pretty obvious that the parents probably didn't have love for him for him to be going to somewhere else other than his parents. Yes. Otherwise, he possibly would be going to his parents to learn and, and so forth. So it's quite obvious that, that even the question, is it possible he will never see his parents again, is again another demonstration of another injury of Fred's. Like, yeah. what, if we don't give him to the parents now, does that mean he'll never see his parents? <laughs> well, of course not. Of yeah. course, it doesn't mean that at all. Yeah. It means that while there are no, there's no bond of common desire or love, that he'll probably un not want to see his parents, but he has the freedom to see his parents whenever he wants, as long as his parents are in a, in, in a, a darker condition than he is, he can go to them anytime. And if they were in a brighter condition than he was, then they'd probably likely be with him already. <laughs> so, so of course he may see them at some point in the future. The question becomes, would he really want to? Mm -hmm. and, and if most people on earth were honest about their family, they'd have to ask themselves the question, do I really want to see them? <laughs> and, and the, the, you know, if most people were frank with themselves and honest with themselves about their true feelings towards their family, they'd probably go, maybe I don't really want to see them, at least while they're like they are. <laughs> do you know? Yeah, and, and this is something that we don't consider on earth. It goes, we feel there's some, there's some kind of love-based obligation, but it's not a love-based obligation. It's an addictive-based obligation. It's a codependent obligation that causes us to feel that we need to visit people who obviously don't care about us or obviously don't have similar desires to us, or even if they do care about it, obviously they don't have similar interest. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you want to see such people? Like, I don't see any problem with not seeing such people. You, might, you see the people who you, want to have, who mm -hmm. you have interest with. So I yeah, feel I agree. again the I just I feel like I lived so much in my life um, in an effort to please those people around me I live so far detuned from my desires. It yeah. You know, it, I had to be searingly honest with myself mm. 
about how I really felt in those situations because mm. I think I felt like that was the only way I was going to get any approval or mm. love yeah. was to emulate the desires of those people I grew up with yeah. when in fact a lot of them were not my own at all. Yeah. So it takes, it does take development, doesn't it, in yourself and yes. in, in fostering And also development of your own will to a large degree, doesn't it? Because you, you have to honour the fact that oh, I'm not really drawn there. Yes. Like I, I, remember, I, I know you've said to me that often you'd go home and you'd get asthma straight away and when you were away from home there was no asthma. Yeah. And, and there's an indication that obviously there's a feeling of oppression at home that's not there when you're away. And, and so when you're honest with yourself, you go, okay, I go home, I get asthma. I'm away, I don't get asthma. There's got to be some reason why I get an asthma here, right? Yeah. There's some kind of physical response to the environment. So it's got to be related to the oppression that I feel when I go home. Mm -hmm. and, and why do I feel so suppressed, uh, you know, suppressed when I go home? Because I am suppressed <laughs> when I go home. <laughs> you know that? And do I want this anymore? And this is where most people don't use their will. What they do is they think that not going home, for whatever reason, means they don't love the family anymore. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that you no longer want to put up with the fact that you're not loved anymore. Yes. That you, know, that you don't want to put up with the control and the manipulation anymore. That's all. And when the control and manipulation stops, I'm sure you'd be re-attracted to, the, to them because they're people from your past and you'd want to catch up with them again. And this is where I see, uh, you know, a lot of people are in that boat on earth, but they completely deny that feeling that they have. Yeah, that's what I was referring to, yeah. just the, even having the feeling, even though it existed within me, mm -hmm. most certainly, but me having the feeling was so scary. And felt, you felt guilty, I felt you felt like selfish, you weren't loving, guilty. you're selfish. Yep. But they are all emotions that the parent created in order to, for you to have to spend time with them yep. in the first place. And yep. that's the ironic, uh, irony of this is that, is that quite frequently, the very emotions we're feeling weren't even created by ourselves in the beginning, they were created by the parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, yeah, I find it's, it, Family relationships have, have got to make severe changes on earth in order for there to be any happiness here on earth. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's pretty self-evident, I think, because the majority of people's hardships, problems and, uh, and feelings are all revolving around how they were t treated generally as children mm -hmm. through their family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so really in answer to the question that you just raised earlier about whether, whether Limpy Jack was going to see his family again, mm -hmm. um, Mahanin answers that in very eloquent terms. Yes. And he says actually that he has a vision for the future where all families will be reunited because everyone will have come to want God and to want God's way. And to also and want love. And love, to, want to want love. love. Yeah. and to repent and to, to yeah. want to love. And, and so he sees heaven complete, this, yes. this beautiful concept, yes. that where every soul will be drawn together. And in that way, yeah, all families will come together. Naturally. Yeah. Naturally so. Because yeah. the more you're drawn to God, it's like you're drawn closer to each other as you're drawn to God. There is this the common concept among some people who think about free will and they think that because we have free will that, you know, you people are not going to be drawn together. I know there's many people who are interested in the Paget messages who, and who read them. And I've often had a look at their forums, you know, in the past and, and seen that they've talked about how it seems that we can't cooperate with each other. It's because we all have so individual personalities. No, it's not. It's because you don't love. Yes. <laughs> it's because you haven't learnt how to love and you haven't received God's love, even though you're claiming to. Because th the reality is when you receive God's love and when you actually, when it touches your soul, you're drawn together with other people who are in the same condition. You're not repelled by them. You don't push e each other away and you cooperate easily win that state. Mm. It's really easy to cooperate with people who have the same condition of love as you 